Welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Gerardo and I'm joined today by Danny from Denso. Welcome, Danny. Hello, thank you. So, Danny, tell us what you do at Denso. Denso, we are helping governments to address illicit trade by implementing such a solution. That's good. So, what kind of problem are you addressing with this architecture? I will tell you about uh, traceability of finished goods. And here, we are talking about the European Union uh, adopted a, a law that mm -hmm. forces the tobacco industry to track and trace all finished goods. It means every pack has to be uniquely marked, serialized, track and traced. Oh wow, so that's so all the supply chain for tobacco across Europe. Not only the supply chain, also all the uh, production lines. Wow, how many, how many messages or packages are we talking about here? We are talking about 150 billion packs that oh. we have to store for five years. Wow, that's a lot. And the message size is about six megabytes, and for us it's 6,000 calls per second. So what message size are you talking about? So the, the messages that are coming into your architecture? So messages are coming through the API gateway mm -hmm. and then uh, push to Lambda. And this is the validation step, and uh, that's very important in our systems. We have to reject non-acceptable uh, messages. So we have a massive traffic to uh, DynamoDB. Okay, and, and so the messages that you're processing in Lambda, how, you said six megabytes, how big, how many, how many validations are you running there? Six megabytes, it represents about 200,000 uh, records, and we have to validate that everyone is uh, genuine. On a, on a single Lambda function? On a single Lambda. How do you do that in code? Uh, we are using .NET Core, heavy parallelism there. Oh, that's it, that makes sense. <laughs> so what happens next? So then we are storing all this into uh, S3, of course, yeah. and uh, through triggers, using Lambda, we are back to queues, mm -hmm. and those queues are pushing data to processing Lambda. So here we are really the processing uh, pipeline. Mm -hmm. We are storing everything into Dynamo, and then, of course, put to EC2. Okay, so this is this is different, right? So you've had a, you have a serverless architecture, and suddenly you dropped EC2 there. Why why are you doing that? For performance and uh, and cost, we are heavily using uh, compute power there, and we have really to prepare uh, non-SQL uh, uh, data to be digested into a, a SQL structure in Redshift. Okay, so you need massive processing power here, um, and you ran your test and worked out that is better from, cost, from the cost perspective in your case, is that right? Absolutely. Okay, that's okay. Um, and what's, what about next? What, what happens after you process and transform all this data? So here all data are ready to be stored into S3 and mm -hmm. to be loaded to copy command straightforward into Redshift. But we are, we are achieving that through a data pipeline. Okay. Because we are preparing uh, all the fact tables and all the logical steps to prepare data ready to be consumed into Redshift. That's really good. So why have you chosen Redshift? What, what, what is Redshift doing for you in this architecture? Redshift is really uh, the column store mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, used to prepare all fact tables. Mm -hmm. So here we are really ready, straightforward to address this in, uh, in QuickSight using Spice. Okay, so you run a bunch of queries on, on Redshift uh, that help you then visualize those queries in QuickSight for your customer, is that right? We do prepare the data in, in Redshift, and then we are loading only fact tables, okay. uh, fast stuff in QuickSight. So what sort of benefits are you guys at Denso getting uh, from implementing an architecture like this? For us, it's a time to market. We don't have to roll out and take care about the infrastructure. Yeah. We spare a lot of weeks for that, and of course, you can guess, everything is automated through continuous integration, so it's fast. Yeah, so you're freeing up a lot of engineering time so you can focus on the functionality of your on application. On what matters. This is really good, Danny. Thank you so much for sharing this architecture with us. My pleasure. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture. See you next time.